Hi, everybody. So happy to be here. I'm Dr. Deborah Thompson, and today we're going to be talking about a concept that's really, really, really important to me and to you and to the whole wide world. It's something called One Health. So right now, do you know why you're staying at home? Why you're staying away from other people? Have you heard of this virus that's going around the world? Well, we're going to be talking about that for a little bit. And we're going to talk about how this actually probably came about, how we can protect ourselves today, how can we protect our family? And also, what can we do so that we can prevent this from happening in the future? Okay, ready to get started? Awesome. So today's um, lesson is called Outbreak, One World, One Health. We are going to go over five different definitions. And I know learning definitions is kind of hard sometimes, but we'll go over it in a fun way, and I promise. The first one's called One Health. The second one is a species. The third one is a zoonotic disease. I know it's a long, long term, but we'll get through that together. Zoonotic disease. The fourth one is mutations. And the fifth one is vaccine. Okay, so what is One Health? Um, Vanessa, if you can un mute the participants when they answer this question, what can you see in this red circle here? Who can tell me, what can you see in that red circle? Go ahead, Baraka. A man and a woman. A man and a woman, perfect. Thank you, Baraka. And what can be seen in this purple circle? Braca, you go ahead again. <laughs> Animals. Animals. And what's in this last circle, Baraka? This green circle? Trees. Trees. Perfect. So where is the star? Where is that blue star found? Middle. It's in the middle. It's in the middle because it shares everything that you see on the screen. You have the connection between animal health and human health, man and woman, and plant health and environmental health. Does anybody know what the environment is? Can somebody explain to me what is the environment? Have you heard that term before? Go ahead, Baraka. So, our surrounding. What? Yes, exactly. It's our surroundings. So right now, my environment is this room. And when my cat walks by, my cat will be in my environment. Maya, what is in your environment right now? Maya, I think you're muted. Do you think you can unmute yourself first? Or Vanessa, perhaps you can help her if she has trouble? I don't have access to unmute her for some reason. Oh, okay. Oh, there or, we go. Yeah. Go ahead, Maya. What's in your environment? I have, in my environment right now, is my bed surroundings and my room surroundings, which is lots of toys and a big blanket. Whoa, that sounds very comfortable. You're very lucky to have that. That's wonderful. So One Health is the connection between the environment, your surroundings, the plants around you, animals around you, and you. So who can tell me at least the three components, the three parts of One Health? 
raise your hand and I'll ask you that same question later on. Who can tell me the three parts of One Health? Mm, me can. Okay, please. Animals, our surrounding, and humans. Great job! Let's all applaud! And the surroundings is the environment, right? And it can be indoors, it can be outdoors. Excellent. Way to go, guys. That's wonderful. Now, let's talk about how we can protect ourselves from this virus that's going around the world. It's called the novel coronavirus. The fancy way to call this virus is something called SARS-CoV-2, and it causes the COVID-19 disease. Um, so who can say one thing that they see on the screen right now to protect yourself? What can you do to protect yourself right now? And you're welcome to say two things if you want. Nixon, do you want to share? Yes. What two things do you see on Washing the screen? Washing hands. Washing hands, excellent. So Nixon, do you know how long should you wash your hands with soap and water? No. No? No. 20 seconds. So we're going to do a song soon that lasts for 20 seconds, okay? Um, but Nixon, can you say one other thing that's in this picture? How else can we protect ourselves? Mask. Can you say it again? I did not hear, I'm sorry. Mask. A mask, yay, good job. Yes, a mask is very, very important because if you're talking or singing as we all like to do or coughing or sneezing a mask can help keep our germs near us so it doesn't spread too far right and then a mask is important for us to have on us because if somebody else is talking or singing or um coughing or sneezing then it's less chance for their germs to get to us. So we don't want any germs to be shared. We like sharing, we don't like sharing germs, right? Okay, who can say one or two other things that they see on this screen? Me. Go ahead, Maya. Um, don't share drinks. And if you're sick, call the doctor. Those are two yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're sick, that's when you don't want to be sharing because you could be sharing germs, right? And if you're sick, you don't want to be sharing your environment, your surroundings. So you need to try to stay a little bit far from other people but your parents can help you with that. And definitely, if you are sick, call your doctor, call your human doctor. <laughs> We're gonna get into that a little bit more. Now, when it comes to cleaning up, it's very important that um, you know, your parents and the adults clean with good, nice, clean products at home to make sure everybody stays healthy. And if you do use tissues, what do you need to do afterward? You have to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to all pretend like we're washing our hands, okay? I am going to sing a song that I think will last to 20 or 30 seconds, but I need all of you to count for me at the same time. You think you can do that? Yeah? 
Okay, Vanessa, if you can start leading the counting, then I will start singing my song and we're going to all pretend to wash our hands together at the same time. Okay. Okay. Make sure you get under the fingernails, around each finger. Let's be thorough, okay? So we're washing with soap and water right now. Okay, start counting, please. One. One. A, B, D, D, E, F, G, I, H, I, J, K, L, N, N, O, N, E, Q, R, S, 14, U, B, 16, 17, U, X, Nine. 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, A, A, B, C yep. song. The A, B, C song. A, B, do you know, do you have other songs that you like that can last for 20 seconds? C, D, E, H, I, J. Exactly. How about like happy birthday? Do you think that that lasts for 20 seconds? If you sing it twice, it lasts for 20 seconds. So that means it's 10 seconds. Exactly. So how about this? I count to 20 seconds and you all sing happy birthday twice. Okay? <laughs> you wanna lead this, Maya, and then everybody can sing with you? Mm-hmm. Okay, ready, set, go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear whoever. Happy birthday to you. Again, good job. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. 27, 28, 29, 30. Good job, everybody. Way to go. Excellent. Good voices, too. So now we're going to learn about sneezing. Hear a sneeze. Raise your hand if you've sneezed before. Yeah, we all have, right? Yeah. So now we're going to learn from a really cool show called Mythbusters from the Discovery Channel in the United States. And we're going to learn how far a sneeze can actually go. Now, what these scientists are doing is that they're using colors. Um, so they have food coloring and something else that they put in there. They, they uh, sniff a little bit and then they sneeze it out and we can see how far it, how far it travels. <laughs> so um, let's all watch this video and do not do this at home, okay? This is all for fun to watch, um, but it's going to be really interesting and we're going to learn a lot. So let's learn together. And afterward, I'm going to ask you, what did you learn? Okay, ready? Let's get started. Yeah. That's one. Yep. Oh, there's another one coming. For each style, <coughs> they're going to unleash a sample of three sneezes. <coughs> oh, it looks horrible, doesn't it? I look like a vampire. It's just ah, food coloring. Adam's face is a picture. But it's the canvas that tells the real story. I see spots up to eight feet away, dude. Yeah, it did spread quite a lot, but there's a lot of markings here. 
So I'd say single hand, not so good. Yeah, not so good. Not so good. And then some. Even with his hand directly in front of the oncoming sneeze, Adam can't begin to contain the explosion. Now, I'm pretty clear. Sneezing into your hand is meant as a courtesy to those around you to keep from spreading your germs on them. And as far as I can see, it's quite effective at doing exactly the opposite. I noticed there's almost no red dye on me at all and crap loads all around me. If I was on a subway, I'm typhoid Mary. With the hand getting the thumbs down, can the elbow do any better? To find out, it's over to Jamie, and he'll be sneezing in green. Now, we wait for the sneeze to take effect on Jamie's. Who should knows? Slowly, it irritates the cilia inside. And with the cilia salivating... Three sneezes later, and the results are very impressive. Yeah, I see only two droplets and one on your shoe. Let's look at your elbow here. That's totally localized to you, man. And you know what? It's all on my arm and not on my hand, so I'm not as likely to spread it around. Yeah, doubly effective. Hands down, the elbow is a highly effective technique, with virtually the entire sneeze contained on each of Janie's sneezes. But can the humble Hanky do better still? Well, it's back to Adam, and for this final test, he's sneezing in flu. <laughs> How did we do? I see a tiny, 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 tiny dot of blue there. At first, it seems like the hanky may be victorious. Until I see some on the hanky. Look, it's penetrated all the way to both sides. It's penetrated both sides and, perhaps most damningly, whoop, it's on my hand. Ready to spread to the next person whose hand I shake. The sneeze seeped through the hanky, contaminating Adam's hand, making it a pretty poor technique. And it gets worse. Let me make one more thing clear about this hanky I'm holding here. Imagine, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you, you sneeze in it all day long, and you keep on putting it in your pocket, pulling it back out, giving people change from your pocket, handing them your pen, handing them your phone, talking on your phone, spreading germs. Yeah, it's not just a Rorschach test, it's a Petri dish. <laughs> Okay, so raise your hand. What did you learn just there? Just there and then. Let's see your face. Nixon, do you want to share? Nixon, did you learn anything for that from that? Anything surprise you? Or can you tell us one thing that you you saw that you already knew but you but you thought was cool? I think there's a connection problem. Well, we'll, so let's just review for a little bit. If we use a handkerchief, what happens to our hands? If we use a tissue, a chew, a chew, a chew, what happens to our hands? Is it clean or is it not clean? Not clean. Not clean, okay. How about this? If I sneeze into my elbow, a chew, a chew, a chew into my elbow, and then I fold my arms, what happens to my other hand? A chew, a chew, a chew. <laughs> Can you say it again? It gets germs. It gets the germs. So what do you do? If you get germs on your hands, what do you do? Wash. You wash. Baraka, how long do you wash your hands for with soap and water? 
20 seconds. 20 seconds, exactly. Great job. Okay, so let's learn some more things. Has any of you heard the word species before? <laughs> Maya, you have. Can you tell me what is a species? A type, like maybe a type of something. A type of something, yeah. A type of living something, right? So think of a species like this. It could be a group of something that's alive that can make babies with something else that is so similar that it can be alive. So for instance, a dog and a cat, right? If a dog and a cat meet, can they make babies? Yes or no? Have you ever heard of a dog and a cat making babies? Yes. What? <laughs> Those would be incredibly cute babies, but they don't exist. So when two cats come together, they make kittens, right? When two dogs come together, what do they make? Puppy dogs. Yeah, more dogs and puppies, right? But if a dog and a cat come together, they're two different species, so they're not going to make any, any babies. So let's go through a little activity here. How many species do you see in this picture? Show me a number of, I hear one. Anybody else have a guess? One. I heard one, yeah. Did I hear two? Yeah, two, there is two. Okay, where are the two you think? Dog. Dog. And Baraka, do you have something to add? Yes. Okay. A dog and a cat. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of these looks like a cat, but they're actually both two dogs. But I see more than three species in this one picture. So let's go through that together. So number one is dogs. Number two, a human. Yeah, human beings. And then number three, I see at least one type of tree. And then I see one species of grass at least. So actually there are at least four different species in this picture. So let's try again, ready? These are living. Yeah, trees are living. How many species in this picture? One. Oh, you said one? Yes. One, yes, exactly. One. Good job, good job. And how many species in this picture? Whoa. Yeah. Nixon, if you could answer, can you hear us well? Yeah, how many species do you think in this picture? Show us number of fingers. One, two, three, four, five. How about everybody help? Show me the number of fingers you think. Mm. I see. What do you see, Vanessa? I think I saw two. I think I saw three there. Okay, so the answer, let's count together. We have one species here. It's a dog, right? And this puppy is the same species as the, as the parents. And we have at least one species of a tree. Right at least one species of a different type of grass. Perfect. So we have at least three in this picture. Good job, everybody. Okay, now who can tell me, we're gonna remember from that very early slide, what are the three parts of One Health? 
Does anybody remember what are the three parts of One Health? Mm, I remember. Um, Vanessa, who do you want to call on? Rocco, go ahead and share. Baraka, I don't know if you're frozen or not. I think um, he is. Yeah, okay. Is there anybody else who knows the three parts of One Health? I know. Go ahead, Maya. Animals, oh. our environment, and humans. Good job! And now we're going to be talking about environmental health right now. So this right here is a beautiful forest. There are a lot of trees. There are a lot of animals. Who can tell me an animal that they see? One species that they see on the screen. Go ahead, Maya. I see foxes. Foxes, good job. Anybody else? Any other species you see? Nixon? And so right now we see trees, right? We see bats, we see birds, we see foxes, and we see rats. Okay, so right here it's a beautiful, healthy, and happy environment. Everybody in here is not competing for food or for a home. Everybody has enough space for themselves and they're all healthy. But something's gonna change and you tell me what changes, okay? Now look closely. What changes? Humans come down and shop down their environment and they don't have enough place to live. Who doesn't have enough place to live? The animals, because Good. people are coming down and chopping down trees. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good answer. So, yeah, let's review that a little bit more. Very good. So, people, so another species, right? Another species of animals is moving in. So these people are moving into the forest and they are chopping down trees because they need to, you know, have a home with that wood. They have to um, have a fireplace and use that wood um, to make the fire. So they, they need that wood, but look at the consequences. Look what happens. Where are these animals moving? They're moving into a smaller place. And say, for instance, if you have a friend over and they're staying in your room, does the room seem smaller to you or does it seem bigger now with more people in the room? Smaller. Seems smaller and you have to share more, right? And if you're looking for one food source, you have to compete for that food. So it's not really fun. It can actually cause a little bit of stress. Has, uh, has everybody here felt stress? I know I have. I have once. Once um, I had like a friend over. Well, I had like, there was two friends over because we were having, gonna have a sleepover with them. Mm -hmm. um, and Leo was in our room and so was me and Jada and our friends too. Like our two. Outed, right? And there was five people in our room. It's a lot of people, right? And especially, you know, if, if you want to share toys or if you want to, um, you know, have a conversation, everybody's talking at once and it can get, you know, a little bit stressful. And so when all these animals are in a smaller place, they have to compete more for food and for their homes. And when you get stressed for a long period of time, you can sometimes get sick. Now, there's an issue with that. When animals are too close together, and keep in mind near people too, 
and you feel sick, then you can actually share the germ. And this is another term that we're using today, a zoonotic disease. Can we all say that together with me? Zoonotic uh, disease. Zoonotic disease. Yeah, let's try one more time. Zoonotic disease. Yeah. So in the word zoonotic, do you, do you see a familiar word? Maybe the first three letters, zoo? Yeah, zoo. <laughs> yeah. So who here has been to the zoo before? I went yesterday. Oh, wow. Lucky. So in a zoo, there are a lot of different species, right? It's not just one species. It's a lot of species. And who can tell me, and Vanessa, you can help um, call on somebody who raises their hand. What is a disease? What is a disease? What does that mean? Go ahead, Nixon. You have to unmute yourself first. Maya, do you want to help him out? Okay. What is it, a disease? Uh, it's a type of sickness that, like, it's not a very great sickness. Uh, yeah, you feel sick, right? That's what a disease is, when somebody and something feels sick. So diseases can happen in plants, it can happen in animals, can happen in us. And a zoonotic disease is a disease that can actually jump in different species. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. A zoonotic disease, examples. Can anybody guess an example of a disease that can be shared between people and another animal? Baraka? Corona. Corona, yeah, good job. Yep, this virus that's going around the world, the novel coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2 is, as it's called by scientists, causing COVID-19 disease. Yes, scientists around the world think that it came from an animal. Now, it came from an animal maybe in a, what we call a wet market. So an animal, uh, like an animal market where a lot of animals are close together and they're very stressed and if they, um, sneeze or pee or poop and that that material gets to another species then it can increase the chance of sharing those germs and people are walking around there so it can share to people too good example who can give me another example of a zoonotic disease maya do you have one mm. Things in Rabies. maybe like lots of people decide to come together, but there's also one that might want to come even though it's sick. Yeah, if you're sick, it's best to stay away from other people. Remember how far that sneeze can travel. It can travel quite far. So that's why a mask is important, but also distance. I think I heard Baraka say rabies. <laughs> Uh, yep. Rabies can be shared between any mammal. Any mammal. Can you hear me all very well? Yes. So every animal that um, that gives milk has spur and does not lay eggs. <laughs> so those types of animals can have rabies. Um, rabies is another type of virus and it can be shared between different species. Good job. Another thing that's important is that, you know, you can just be outside um, in the environment, in a forest, and just be too close to uh, a wild animal or say dirty water 
paper that a, that an animal has um, contaminated by accident, and then a person can get sick. So it all comes down to our environment, right? So the way to protect ourselves from a zoonotic disease is to make sure that we respect the distance between. Uh, any questions with that? Everybody else, and I think there'll be less feedback that way, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, excellent. I think it's just the internet being funny. Okay, so the third part is human health. Who can tell me what is a zoonotic disease and why is it important for human health? What is a zoonotic disease and why is it important for human health? So why is it important? We're it's getting a lot of feedback. We are getting feedback. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this is better. Yeah. Now it seems to be working. Thank you very much. Sorry for that interference with the computer. Okay, so a zoonotic disease is important for human health because when a disease jumps between different species, including people, right? So remember, these animals are stressed. They're in a smaller environment and they're being forced out of that environment into a new environment. And when there's more interaction and more co uh, connection between animals and people, that can increase the chance of getting a disease to jump between different species. Now, some people say that these diseases are coming from bats. And some people say, okay, well, you need to get rid of all the bats. But that is not the answer. Actually, that will hurt the planet. Why do you think bats are important? Raise your hand if you can tell me why bats are important. I think I see Eleanor. Eleanor's hand. Let's see, can we, un uh, Eleanor, can you unmute yourself? I think you froze. Nixon, um, can you try to unmute yourself? Hi, Nixon, we can hear you now. Why are bats? Why are bats? Nixon, can you tell us why, why are bats important? Pollination. Pollination. Good job. Eleanor, do you have another one? Yes. Good job. Yes, exactly. So let's go over that together. And I'm actually going to. For now. Oh, yes. Bats are very important because. Bats are very important. Because they can eat insects, right? And sometimes bats are so important. If bats are gone, the entire environment collapses. So it is very, very, very important to protect bats because we want to keep the plants. We want to keep the environment healthy, right? 
Um, so we cannot ignore or get rid of bats. We need to keep bats. Last thing is what is a mutation? Who here, raise your hand if you see something that looks kind of funny. What looks kind of strange here? What do you see as a change? And Vanessa, if you can help choose a participant. Maya, do you want to share? The strawberries are weird. Yeah, the strawberries right here in the center. So there's a mutation there. A mutation is a change. It changes the behavior. It changes the development of something. So you could see in this pear, there's a mutation in this tomato. And then <laughs> in this kitten. What's funny with this kitten? What's interesting there? How many toes does that kitten have? Baraka? Baraka, yes? Six. Six, yes, there are six toes. And is that more or less than usual? More. more. Exactly. So a mutation is change. A change can be good, it can be bad, it can strengthen something, it can weaken something. And it happens in everything. It happens in plants, it happens in animals, it happens in people. It happens in viruses too. And mutations can happen by accident. And the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, that is going around the world, it can mutate, it can change. And it is zoonotic. Who can tell me, what is a zoonotic disease? Something that can spread. If you, if yeah. you, it won't spread if you have a bigger space in of your environment, so you won't be so close together and get sick because you're sharing lots and lots of germs. Yeah, good. Something to add, Baraka. It can spread between different. What's the other word? It can spread between different. Starts with an S. Species, right? It can spread between different species. And one way to decrease or lower the risk of a zoonotic disease jumping between different species is to make sure that we respect the distance between species. So we're going to work with something that's a model. And scientists work with models all the time. It's a way that scientists can kind of pretend and see into the future. And we're going to work with a model here to show a mutation, but we need some volunteers. Who wants to be a part of this challenge and read a sentence five times fast? I'll show you the sentence. And maybe, oh, Eleanor wants to. Okay, Eleanor. Eleanor and Baraka. Eleanor, can you unmute yourself and say this sentence five times fast? And we're going to see, are there any mutations in this? Any changes? Okay, Eleanor, you can start. A black bug eat up a black bug bear yeah, you did a good job. It was a little bit on the slow side. Can we try to speed it up? Baraka, do you want to try? Yes. Okay, try as fast as you can. 
black a black b black b bear a black bug bit a big black bear oh my gosh so hard do you want to try one more time baraka yes go for it I think you froze. Maya, do you want to try? A black bug bit a big black bear. Faster, again. A black bug bit a big black bear. Faster, faster, faster. A black bug bit a big bear. Again. A black bug bit a big black bear. One more time, really fast. A black bug bit a big black bear. <laughs> Very good. Very good, everybody. So I heard one mutation. I heard one change. And Maya uh, skipped the word black. But that's OK, because that happens by accident. So if I were to try this, and this is really hard, a black bug bit a big black bear, a black bug bit a big, big black bear, a black bug bit a big black bear, a black bug bit a big black bear. Okay, clearly, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do this very well. And there were like over a 10 mutations, right? You all heard them? You all heard those mutations? All those changes? Well, that ha happened by accident. And mutations are sometimes really hard to predict. So let's guess, is this, if this virus divides into two viruses, do you think it's going to stay red for the second example, blue or purple? So on the count of three, we, we yell out what color, red, blue, or purple, this next virus is going to be. Let's try to predict when a change happens, okay? On the count of three, one, two, three, purple. purple. Okay, well, let's see. It's red. Oh. Okay, let's try this again. One, two, three. Red. Oh, shoot. It's purple. Okay, last one. Is this going to be blue, red, or purple? On the count of three. One, two, three. Red. Oh, no. I messed up again. So it was hard to predict when things change and when there are mutations. Now let's review a little bit. How can we protect ourselves in the future? We heard about the three parts of One Health. Who can tell me the three parts of One Health? Maya? Animals, environment, and humans. Very good. So we can stay away from some wild animals and respect our distance because there's such thing as zoonotic diseases that jump between different species. We can start to try to rebuild the forest and improve the health of the environment. Eleanor, do you have something to add? Uh, you're on mute, Eleanor. You're muted, Eleanor. I'm sorry, can you unmute? Yes. Yes. Echo, what time is it? Can you say it again, Eleanor? Sorry, you're muted again. Sorry, could not hear. Last but not least, right now, scientists around the world are making a vaccine. And so you might have heard that word before, but veterinarians, so animal doctors and human doctors and other, other specialists, other scientists are now working together to try to make a vaccine for the, uh, for the coronavirus. And that vaccine is something to help make your body stronger to fight a disease. Okay, so that's in the making right now and it's being made by scientists around the world. So the parents that are listening, if you go to a website that's out of Public Health, uh, Public Health England, it's called eBug, 
e-bug.eu. They have some really fun games that talks about disease transmission and um, helps kids uh, remember how to wash their hands and how to stop the spread of diseases. Thank you all so much for participating. You are all so wonderful. It was wonderful to see you all and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Okay, bye guys, good job. Bye. Good job.